Welcome to my new project called 8.0. This is about creating an 8-bit computer from zero. In order to create a real computer system that can run on its own, we need a CPU that can execute code from RAM. Most modern microcontrollers can only execute code from flash program memory, but that's no good for a computer system because you want to be able to code on the thing itself or load programs from, say, an SD card or something and execute it directly without having to reflash the program memory. And we also need an external bus with the address and data lines so that we can hook up extra memory and I.O. stuff. What I found is the EZAD microcontroller. It is compatible with the original Z-Log Z80 but it runs at up to 50 MHz speed and it's pipelined so it uses a lot less cycles to execute one instruction than the original Z80 and it also has lots of integrated peripherals it has 256 kilobyte flash program memory but also 16 kilobytes of SRAM and most importantly it can execute code from any memory location from the flash memory, from the internal SRAM, or even external memory. As I already said, it contains lots of integrated devices, such as two UARTs, SPI, I2C, infrared decoder, encoder, real time clock, four 16 bit timer counters, watchdog timer, 32 general purpose IO pins, and a base T Ethernet EMAC. So you need an external file but it has the Ethernet Mac integrated into it, which is quite nice. Of course I could just use the official development board for the microcontroller and the official um, operating system supplied by Zlog, and I could put it in a box and I'd be done. I would have an easy AD computer with a Unix kind operating system and TCP IP stack and I could run all kinds of programs on it. But that's not what I'm going to do, because I want to design the computer system myself. So, except for the chip, I will take nothing. The first thing that I made is this prototyping board. Basically, it just gives me access to all of the CPU pins. It has very few other components except for the chip. So, there's the uh, oscillator, crystal and here goes the 3.3 volts voltage regulator and here are some decoupling capacitors and that's all there is to it there's nothing more on there this is the populated board with the EZ80 and a 10 MHz crystal we can later multiply the frequency internally using a phase locked loop. Um, here's a filter for that. It's not populated yet. I will do that later when I need more speed. All the other connections go to the top. And if I flip the board over, you can see there's a breadboard prototyping space on top. And already I already built something on here. I will explain that in a minute. Here's the address lines and data and control is over here. This is the reset. So this the yellow button is the reset button obviously. And here are all the ports. Now let me explain things on the top. What I built is this. There is a serial port here, RS232. It goes through a level shifter which makes a 3.3 volt signal out of the data. And this goes into an AVR microcontroller which talks to the EZ80 over the ZDI interface, which is the Zlog debug interface. And the EZ80 itself is connected again through the level shifter. There are two on there on the same chip back to another serial port. There are the two reset buttons, the yellow one and the red one. And there is also an ISP connector so I can load a program onto the AVR microcontroller. This is what it looks like. 
We can talk to the microcontroller on top through this serial interface. The microcontroller can talk to the CPU on the back through the Zlog debug interface and the CPU can talk back to whatever we connect here through its UART. Here's the two reset buttons and the ISP connector for the microcontroller. Now let's connect it to a PC. We need two serial connectors, one here and the other one, and also some power. I already have a program on the AVR and as, as soon as I power it up it says ready and debug and I can enter something. So this gives me an overview of what I can do. I can for example read the product ID. This shows me that the ZDI interface is working and the CPU is alive and it actually responds. So this is the product ID. 0008 is the easy AD device and 02 is the revision. Next we can look at the status. As we can see ZDI is not active which means we cannot use any of the other things like reading registers because to do that we need to break on the next instruction which is what we can do now, break. So, can see now ZDI is active and we can for example read all the CPU registers so there's flags A, B, C, D, E, H, L, stack point and program counter. The program counter is currently at 0038 and that's because the memory, let's look at the memory at this is full of FFs because um, by default this starts in the flash memory and there's nothing on there yet and for flash memory that means all FF and FF happens to be the opcode for we start at 0038 so it executes that instruction and at 0038 it just finds another FF and so it's stuck there we can also increase or decrease the program counter but that won't help much because the memory is full with FFs here and we can write to that memory because um, the flash memory is white protected and we have to do some other stuff to be able to write to it and instead we just want to move to another place into the internal SRAM and in order to do this I just hit 0 and now the program count is at E000 and there's another thing that happened um, the Easy AD device actually has 24 bits of address but it currently operates in Z80 mode which is the default when it boots up it's compatible with the original Z80 and has only 16 bit addresses and the upper 8 bits of the address bus are set to a fixed value and the internal SRAM happens to be at the very top of the entire address space so there's this um, what's it called memory base M base register which specifies the top 8 address bits in Z80 mode and the this command also sets the M base register to FF, which we don't see here, but, but it has been done. Because if I read the memory now, I can see random junk in the SRAM, which is there when you boot. There's, it's undefined, so there's just random numbers in here. And of course, we can now write to it. For example, 5, 8. And if we decrease the program counter again, because writing increases it. We can no no not the registers. We can also look at the memory, and there it is, five eight. Um, we can write more stuff into it by just keeping on sending 
write commands and if you go back to zero and look at the memory, here's what I just typed into it. Now I want the easy AD CPU to write something on the other terminal that I have here through its serial port through the UART. And in order to do that I need to write several data values into IO address space. So there are several things that need to be done to set up the UART and enable it and everything and then send a character. So here's what I found in the data sheet. First we need to write 0, 3, these are all hex values, to the IO address space A5. So it's 0, 0, A5. I just write the lower byte because the higher byte is 0 for all this. And what this does, it enables the alternative pin function. So usually that pin on the board is a general purpose IO pin but we need the alternative function which is the UART pin and we need to enable that first. The next thing is we want to set the baud rate. In order to do this we first have to write 80 to the IO address space C3 which gives us access to the baud rate generator register and we can now write 41 to the IO address space C0 that is a value of 45 in decimal and if we divide the 10 megahertz by 16 times 45 no, it's not. 16 times 65, that gives us the standard 9600 bits per second. So this sets baud rate. Next, we need to write to C3 again. This time a value of 0, 3 that turns off the access to the baud rate register and it also sets 8 data bits no parity, one stop bit. We then write again to... no, not yet. At first we write to IO address C2 and there we write 4 and this actually enables your transmitter. And now we can write to C0 again. As you can see, at first we enabled the access to the baud rate generator. So if we write something to C0 that changes the baud rate, we disabled that again, that's that bit. And if we write to C0 now, it sends whatever we write to it. So we want to send say an, an A, capital A, and that happens to be 41. The same as we have here, it's also value 65. It's a neat coincidence. But if we would like to send B, it's 42. So this is what we have to do. And we don't have an assembler yet, so I have to assemble this by hand. At first, well, first I need to look up the instructions. So there is how I do this: as I load the data value into the accumulator, zero three, and then I do. It's called out. 0 is the instruction. It outputs to an address on page 0, so we need the address here. It's A5 A, well, and that's it. 
So the opcode for that happens to be 3e. That's load into the accumulate and then comes the data value. It's 0, 3 this time. So I'll, I'll make a so that's the value that we can choose. And then the there's the out zero command instruction or whatever. And it is ED three nine. Three nine says you take it from the accumulator and then we put our IO address which is A five for example. And we have to have to do this one, two, three, four, five, six times. And then I will add another opcode, it's one eight F E. And this is just a just a jump. I think it's JP and um, minus two. It's measured from the point after here, so it jumps back to here, so it's just stuck there. We could you well at first I, I I actually tried this program before. Um, first I used the halt instruction, but it it looks like if the CPU is halted, the ZDI doesn't work anymore. So I just used the, this halt and catch file thing. So it's called halt and catch file because there's a story that uh, when they had core memory, which is just memory made of well wires wrapped around magnetic material if you if you would execute such an instruction it would read the same um, memory space over and over again and then the coils would heat up and the whole thing could catch fire but well that's just why I call it hot and catch fire it just jumps to where it was so it's stuck there If you ever wondered how the first programs were made before they had an assembler, well this is how. You just type them in type the machine code in by hand. So I'm using a keyboard in another system for this, but if they if we were using external memory we could just hook up some switches to the memory chip and then assert the address lines and put the data in manually. So now I'm just Entering the program we assembled. So write three e write zero three write e d three nine a five. One eight FE. Okay, program is now ready. And if we hit C for continue, well, and work again, we can see that the program counter run up to one E. This is where our go back to where your jump is, and it wrote an A. We can go back and have it one again, and there's another A. So it's working. The next thing to do is to write a program that runs on the EZAD, and that allows me to directly 
manipulate the memory just like I did with the debugger so that I don't need the debugger anymore and if I then add a keyboard and a monitor some kind of video interface I don't need any other computer anymore and I have a self-hosted environment where I can continue developing. Let me just put the camera over here so you can see my face. So I will also add documentation for the whole project on the website which I have not made yet but it will be there in the future. I will add the link in the description if it's ready. And I hope some people will be interested in this. I have a couple of boards left so I could sell these. I will definitely make this as a kit. If people are interested, I will make more of these and and have the easy AD preassemble and all the tiny SMD stuff so you can just go ahead and play around with it. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool project. <coughs> um, I'm very enthusiastic about directly working with the hardware and typing in machine code and seeing the real thing going on and I will also develop some kind of operating system and there are many things to do and I don't know where this goes if there will I guess there will at some point be a complete computer system with an operating system and video and maybe even games running on it and can port over some other programs or use original ZAD old school stuff and that's definitely a cool thing to experiment with and play around and I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it press the thumbs up button uh, or subscribe if you don't already have uh, thank you for watching